This is the 2012 Portland Century. Registration is organized as usual. Though I strongly suggest pre-registering online. For the first few miles, you wend your way through Canby suburbs and then onto a bike trail built along the bed of an old logging river. After about four miles, you turn left on the Highway 170 for a quick drop into the Malala River Basin and a short climb out. After about five miles, you make a tricky left turn on the Cracksburger Road. This can be a sketchy intersection because cars generally do about 55 miles an hour and there's lots of trucks. On the plus side, there generally isn't a lot of traffic at this hour in the morning. A right turn onto Harms Road and you're on your way to Malala. The first 18 miles of the ride from Canby to Malala are essentially flat. It's a false flat, actually, as you'll gain about 375 feet over the 18 miles. Oh, I'm getting closer now. As you head south, you'll pass through some beautiful farmland and some wonderful nursery operations. The ride isn't all flat, however. You'll have a couple of drops and then steep climbs out of a couple of creek bottoms. But for the most part, the ride is flat. You will have, on a clear day, a great view of the Cascades on the left. You and I rock and roll it. Rock and roll it. At about mile 11, the 32 mile loop splits off to the right, while the 55 mile loop continues left on Tolliver Road. And just before you enter Malala, at about mile 11, you'll cross Highway 213. Be very careful crossing this road as it has a lot of tr high-speed truck traffic. At about mile 15, you can tank up with water at Leonard Long Park. A good idea since the next rest stop doesn't occur until well into the Sawtell climb. Immediately after Leonard Long Park, you'll cross Highway 211 in the heart of downtown Malala. Shortly thereafter, you'll climb out of Bear Creek and turn left onto Sawtell Road. Along this stretch, you'll have a beautiful view of the Thomas Creek and Kaiser Creek drainage. At mile 18, there's a quick drop into Tiso Creek. It is at the bottom of this creek that the Sawtell climb officially begins. From here to the summit of Coquel Corners, you've got about a 4.7 mile climb of 1,000 feet to cat to climb averaging 4.1% grade. In reality, it's not that straightforward. The first mile of the climb is an ever-increasing grade to about 10%, but it looks flat. So it'll have you thinking there's something wrong with you or your bike or both. And the uncertainties about the climb quickly disappear as you begin the first of about five steep stair-steppy pitches. These stair-steppy pitches have climbs often exceeding 20% with long 2 to 5% percent 
slogs in between. At this point, you are riding through Christmas tree country, where the beauty of those perfect Oregon Christmas trees will help alleviate the pain. You might find yourself wishing for a lower set of gears under one of those Christmas trees. But more immediate help is on the way, because at mile 21, there's a rest stop. I don't know how they do it, but the Portland women seem to improve the food year after year at these rest stops. And this year they outdid themselves with some great fresh fruit, among other treats. After you leave the rest stop, you have about 3 miles and only a total of 345 feet net elevation gain to go until the descent at Coquel Corners but you're going to pay for each one of those 345 feet. When you reach the cemetery at Russellville, it feels like you're at the top. But don't be fooled by the descent, as you'll soon face a series of steep pitches, some of which exceed 20% grade. Not to deceive anyone with the blue skies, this is what the climb looked like on the day of the ride. While it looks bad, the light rain actually felt good. If you're willing to push it, this dip at Hardy Road is just about enough to breeze you over the next climb. When you see this sign, you'll know the pain is almost over. One short last push and you arrive at Coquel Corners. This is where the fun begins. The sled ride begins with a gradual descent. But quickly, the bottom drops out and you're facing a thrilling 18% freefall. It's easy to hit 45 miles an hour on this initial descent, and if you push it and have confidence, the 50s are easily yours. Unfortunately, the descent from Coquel Corners is not a straightforward downhill gliding ride, but a series of nine descending rollers. For many of these rollers, the downhill momentum allows you to take them at high speed with a little out of the saddle big chain ring push. Despite the stair-steppy nature of the descent, you'll spend most of your time surfing down the gravity wave.
you're not going to be able to punch your way over the top of all of these rollers. Sometimes you're just going to have to sit down, drop your gears, and enjoy the climb, knowing that shortly you'll be right back into the fun zone. After 28 and a half miles, you'll do a vertical U-turn in and out of Beaver Creek. It looks like I'm dragging an anchor as I go from about 30 miles an hour to about 5 in a matter of seconds. Although steep, the good news is that it's short, only about a quarter mile, and soon you resume your sled ride down to Scott's Mills. there's one last roller to contend with and then the skids are greased until you hit Nolan Road Unlike the death drop at the beginning of the descent from Coquel Corners, the last few miles of the descent are quite manageable. <laughs> Steep enough to be fast, but not hair raising. So if your need for speed is still unfulfilled, you're going to have to mash the pedals a little bit on this lower section of the descent. Finally, at about mile 32, you hit Nolan's Bridge Road and turn south for the beautiful 25 mile trek back to Canby. The first five miles after the turn onto Nolan's Bridge Road is about a 300 foot false flat descent. So unless the wind is in your face, you're going to be Going fast and feeling good. This part of the ride is great. It not only includes a false flat descent through beautiful farmlands and nurseries, it also has, on a clear day, a view of St. Helens, Mount Adams, and Mount Hood. The, sound of the, music plays. the false flat ends here at Rock Creek and after about a hundred foot climb out of the creek drainage, you'll turn left and head west on Schneider Road. This three mile stretch is flat and can be windy. 
and at mile 40 there is another trip in and out of Rock Creek. There's a rest stop located here at mile 42 where you'll turn right and start heading north on Meridian Road. As you head north for the next seven miles, the road is mainly flat. But there are a handful of leg-breaking little climbs in and out of creek bottoms. This is Lenhart International Airport, just past the 91 school. And a few feet later, you'll be launched on yet another trip in and out of Rock Creek. Night has lost its luster to a soon. This battle of love is such a waste. Your legs may be feeling like rocks by the time you finish the climb out of Rock Creek. At about mile 49, you'll take a quick trip in and out of Batcher Creek. There is no cure to take away the ache. Grab your shoes now. And walk straight through the door Cause you're no substitute for the one I loved before Grab your shoes now And at shortly thereafter you'll arrive at South Lone Elder Road Turn right, head east You've got about five miles left to go The three-mile stretch on Lone Elder is a beautiful ride through farmland and includes a great view of Mount Hood and the Cascade Range, but it's not without its problems. The road is narrow, can have a lot of traffic, and in places, because of the color of the gravel shoulder, it's difficult to see where the road ends and the gravel shoulder begins. At Highway 170, you'll turn left. Be very careful at this intersection as it's sight restricted and has a lot of high speed traffic. With just two miles left, you have yet another drop in and a climb out of the Malala River Valley. There's a nice view of the Malala River. And after a quick crossing of Highway 99, you'll arrive back where you started at the Canby Fairgrounds for some food and rest including a delicious lunch put on by Chris King. Grab some calories because next up is the 45 mile loop. Mm -hmm. 